So let's see first the location of these sensors. We've got here on the driver's side bank 2 and here is the upstream oxygen sensor. And if you follow this wire, it will lead you to this connector here. That's the front of the car. We've got bank 2 sensor 2 and bank 1 sensor 2. Both connectors are attached to this bracket on the transmission oil pan. Now, as you might know, there are two types of oxygen sensors. One is narrow band oxygen sensor and wide band. By just looking at the sensors, it's impossible to determine which one is which. So we have to hook up a scan tool and watch the live data and see what type of information the sensors are offering us. Right now, the engine is not running, so let's start it and have this fuel system status in closed loop because right now it's in open loop. Closed loop means that the computer of the car is using the data from the oxygen sensors to set correctly the fuel trims, to adjust the fuel delivery in order to keep the fuel and air ratio to 14.7 parts of air and one part of fuel. And of course, to detect any deviation from that perfect air to fuel ratio mixture. If you look at the long-term fuel trim, that's what you want to see. That's the perfect number 0.0. .0. This means that the computer in long term did not adjust because there are no vacuum leaks, no fuel leaks. Everything is measured, everything is under control. Now, if you look at the short-term fuel trim, this is the adjustment according to the engine RPM. And you can see here on the green light, the engine RPM is increasing and the short-term fuel trim is decreasing, it's going negative. Now I've got here another screenshot of another graph. This time we've got a wideband oxygen sensor and this provides us with the equivalence ratio, which is basically the same thing as long-term fuel trim. However, you need to keep that value close to one as much as possible. Right here, the car was not started. And then you start the car, the engine RPM increases and we can see the orange long-term fuel trim goes up and another thing to mention when you see for example positive long-term fuel trim and negative short-term fuel trim you have to basically add these two numbers so in reality we've got here minus around 0.8 percent which means that in total the computer of the car is decreasing the fuel delivery slightly now here there can be many variables like it's possible to have a fuel leak and a vacuum leak in the same time and that's why these two fuel trims are different. One is showing positive and one negative. Because, for example, you can have a long-term fuel leak and you can have a temporary vacuum leak, which can happen only when the engine is hot or only when the engine is vibrating or something like that. So it's very important to mix this data with other data as well to find out what's the problem for real. So it's not enough to just look at this data from the oxygen sensor. You need to combine it with more data in order to find out what's the problem on the engine, especially if you have big difference in numbers like, let's say, minus 10 and plus 5, then definitely there is something to look up in that and detect what's the problem. So you can see here how the equivalence ratio is decreasing on the graph when, when the oxygen sensor voltage is also decreasing. Let's check the sensor. We've got these two wires. These are going to be for the heater. Okay, so now usually you should find around 10 or 20 ohms of resistance. And it looks like we've got 2.9 ohms only. I'm going to check with the second oxygen sensor. Okay, so here we've got a little bit more. We've got 4 ohms of reading. And I'm going to back probe these wires. I've got the black terminal of the voltmeter grounded. These white ones should have 12 volts because they are powering the heater inside the oxygen sensor. Now let's see this brown one, 0 0.26 volts. Now let's see the black one, 0 0.69. On the white wire, car battery voltage, the second white wire, car battery voltage. And let's see, the black one has to have 0 0.68 or something. And it does. And let's see the brown one, 0 0.26. So this is pretty much all you can do with a voltmeter on these oxygen sensors. Now let's go and check the downstream oxygen sensors under the car. And again, on the white wire, we've got the car battery voltage. Okay, so the black one has nothing. 
and the brown one has again 0 0.26 now we've got again 0 0.69 now if you want to remove one of the sensors you're gonna need a 22 millimeter in the future i will show you a lot more situations on different cars so you'll understand better how to read the oxygen sensor data if you have questions let me know so stay tuned and i will see you in the next video